Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Game of Ham, an adult party game for 3 to 15 players. This game was kindly provided for review by the publishers. Unfortunately, I'm still in lockdown here in the UK, so I have not been able to gather my group of friends in order to play this game and put it through its paces. However, what I did want to do was put together a video just to show you what's in the box, what the game is all about, so you can see if it's something you might be interested in. First of all, we can't really talk about Game of Ham without mentioning Cards Against Humanity. They are both adult party games and they both involve that fill in the blank Mad Libs type humour. And in fact, Ham is an acronym for hating all mankind. So there is a quite clear parallel in the name. But is Game of Ham a Cards Against Humanity beta? Is there something in this box that makes it stand out above and beyond what is already a very popular party game? I have to say that personally, I'm not a huge fan of Cards Against Humanity. It's okay as a quick distraction, it's okay for whiling away a few moments, but I didn't appreciate how you were always railroaded into very dark humour. And more of a complaint was that I felt it stifled creativity. You really could only make the joke that you were dealt, and that joke was always going to be something gross. I think that Game of Ham is aiming to be Cards Against Humanity Plus, because it has that same core game mechanism, it has that same core element of using words that you are dealt or phrases you are dealt to create sentences or answer questions in funny ways. However, it does some things that enhance that core experience. For a start, it introduces a board game element, and we will take a look at that in a moment. It has a pretty extensive and varied range of prompt cards that do encourage a certain amount of creativity. There are dozens of optional and additional rules so that you can tailor the whole game experience to suit your game group and what you want to get out of your evening. And something that they're pushing at the moment is that you can actually create your own material for the game on the official website and I will be including a link to the official website in the video description because that is where you can go if you would like to order a copy of this game in the US. Finally, and something that I really appreciated, on the response cards, the cards that you will play to fill in the blanks on the prompts, you do get a little explanation on each card and that will either be a little historical fact or it will actually be a definition of the word on the card, which is very useful if you get dealt something that is a slang term that you don't know. We will look at some of the individual cards in a moment and you'll see exactly what I mean. But let's take the lid off this box. You get two rule books, you get a quick start guide, and then you get a pretty hefty main rule book. And the reason it's so hefty is because it is packed with different variants for how to play the game. You get two punch boards, which have these lovely ham icons and little counters. This is for the board game part of the game. You get four double-sided game tiles, which can go together in a wide variety of different configurations. And most importantly, you get a whole heck of a heap of cards. There are over 800 cards in this box. So it's quite a generous serving of content right from the moment you open the box. Interestingly, this game offers three main ways to play. You can play as a straight board game, you can play as a card game, or you can play as a combination of the two. We're going to take a quick look at how the cards work, and then we'll take a quick look at how they interact with the board. At the heart of the game is the card play, the interaction of prompts and responses. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to be keeping this clean for the sake of my channel and uh, not wanting to cause any offence to anybody. But it needs to be pointed out that this game does embrace very dark adult humour. This is a game where every dark human emotion and every vile act, every sick thought, every horrible disease, every atrocity from history, they can all be potential punchlines. If that's not something that uh, you're interested in, then this may not be the game for you. But 
the core element of the experience is the fact that you will have an adjudicator who will put out one of these grey prompt cards and then everybody around the table will be picking a response card or several response cards from a hand of pink cards. Here we have a card that says, when Eeyore starts feeling depressed, he can always rely on blank to cheer him up. Obviously, and because this is a subject close to my heart, it would be a dad joke, obviously. He can always rely on a dad joke to cheer him up. Here's another one. What was Forrest Gump running from? An Amber Alert, obviously. So as you can see, you're looking at a type of gameplay that is that classic adult party game, can you make your mates laugh whilst you have a few drinks type style of play. However, what Game of Ham is trying to do is it's trying to add more creativity into that basic structure. And it does that in several ways. First of all, it has some interesting different types of prompt cards. First of all, you get the blank cards where you have a sentence with a blank in it and it can have one blank, two blank or three blanks. Then you have the questions such as this one. What is the first thing graduates do after they graduate? Then you have the writing cards, which give the judges a little bit more creative freedom. For example, this one says, what was the plot line to? And then the judge has to fill in the blank. And there are some suggestions on these cards. For example, they've listed here, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Titanic, and other popular books and movies. Finally, they have the blanks where the judge will create a prompt and will also determine how many cards people need to play in response to that prompt. Additionally, there are some alternative game styles mentioned in the rules book that offer even more ways to be creative. For example, there is the origin story mode where the judge will pick a grey card. In this case, we have what calls the fall of the Roman Empire. And then the other players have to pick four of their response cards and use those response cards to tell a small story that is thematically linked to whatever the grey card is saying. It could directly answer the question or it could slightly go off on a tangent and do its own thing, but it has to be funny and engaging and link back to that original card in a thematic way. And that's the sort of thing that I'm more interested in because rather than just filling the blanks, you're creating a whole story structure. You're using things that you've been fed, the theme, the cards in your hand to string together something which could be a ludicrous story but hopefully is something that's going to make the people around the table laugh. Of course a game like this often lives or dies based on the quality of the response cards that you have and Game of Ham has a massive selection of these pink response cards and one of the things that is really interesting about them is that every single one has a little bit of text at the bottom which is in some way related to what the card says. Sometimes it will explain the joke. For example, we have the card here, Mr. Potato Head eating chips. And in case you miss the relevance of that, it mentions here in the description, uh, when life goes wrong, Mr. Potato Head can always resort to cannibalism. Sometimes the card will actually define a word that is in the response. For example, here it says that Wapanese is a term to describe someone who is white who has tried too hard to assimilate into Japanese culture. Sometimes, if the reference on the response card is pretty obscure, the card will give you a lot more interesting background on that term. For example, here we have Blood Eagle, which is described as a Viking method of execution. And sometimes the response cards will give you information which isn't necessarily relevant, it's tangentially related in some way. For example, we have here the card misgendering someone on purpose, and the card actually points out that in the American Samoa, this is actually a thing, and it goes on to explain why some families will do that. And I do appreciate this extra bit of information. Sometimes it's just actually quite interesting. I didn't know what the Blood Eagle was until I read that card, uh, but sometimes it just can help you to make use of the card. Um, sometimes if you've got a lot of cards in your hands that have slang terms that you don't necessarily know what they mean, it can actually stifle your creativity. It can make it difficult to use those cards and you end up with a lot of cards that you don't know what to do with. But with this game, normally the little bit of information at the bottom will at least help to guide you into how you can use that card in some way. 
But of course, you will notice that there is certainly a bit of a theme with these responses, that they are quite dark. They are going for that uh, off-color humor. So of course you can play Game of Ham just using those cards, going around the table, changing the judge each round, having a prompt card placed down, having everybody put in their response cards, and just see if you can make each other laugh, and then whoever has the most cards at the end is the winner. But you can also integrate that card game into a board game. And it's a pretty simple concept. You have a board, you can have up to four boards, but I've just set up two here for the sake of this example. And everybody will start on one of these white spaces and everybody needs to get to one of these brown spaces. And you do that by winning cards. Every prompt card has two numbers at the bottom of it. And when you win that card, you get to advance across the board a number of spaces equal to one of those numbers. So I could either move forward two spaces or move forward seven spaces if I was picked as having the best response to this question. And you move your token around the board and if you land on a number space then you can advance forward again that number of spaces and if you land on a colored space you get to take one of the colored cards. And there's a selection of colored cards that all do different things. For example, we have this card here that says force the judge to pick another pink card. And there are other elements to the game like bouncing people back to the last white space. Um, and also there are cards that you can play on each other and ways in which you can negate the effects of those cards. Mainly by collecting cards that spell the word ham. For example, if I had previously won these two prompt cards and then I won this card regarding the Roman Empire and get to add that to my set. Oh look, I've spelled ham. Now if at some point in the future somebody targets me with a card that has a negative effect that I don't like, I can cash in my set of three cards that spell ham and avoid that effect. And that's the general gist of the board game, but there are lots and lots of additional rules that you can add into the game. Lots of different ways you can use to customize the game, to change things up. There are even rules in the back of the book that are for people who are old enough and in states that allow it, that allow you to play with potheads and actually have drug related rules and drinkers and have alcohol related rules. Obviously, don't go playing with those rules unless, you know, it's safe and legal to do so. But that's the game, a very accessible, very customizable adult party game with options to create your own content and make the game pretty much exactly how you want it to be to tailor for whichever group you're playing your game with. Some players may want more of the board game aspect. Some players may just want to play with the cards and the game caters for those different options. Overall, this isn't exactly my sort of game. It still doesn't quite have the level of creativity that I really enjoy, and it still tends to railroad you into making jokes that are off color and are not necessarily my preferred type of humor. But I do appreciate that they have increased the level of creativity and control that you have over the jokes you are trying to make. And the fact that they explain any slang terms and unusual concepts so that you never feel like you're stuck with cards that you don't know what they mean so you can always use them and it helps you to formulate your gags. Having a board game element is interesting, it does add a little bit more depth, it does add some additional structure and it also gives you a number of well-defined winning conditions such as reaching the end target or getting to a certain number of cards or whatever. There's lots of ways you can play it and it just makes the game feel a little bit more structured and a little bit more like something that you might play as more than just a quick filler before you play a main board game. I think for people who enjoy that crude, risque type of humor, they should get a kick out of this game. And the incredibly generous number of cards that you get means that you should have quite a bit of replayability. It should be quite a while before you start seeing things that you've seen before. You just have to know that it is that type of game where you will end up with cards in your hand that are related to um, subjects that are delicate sometimes. And you have to understand that if you've got a card in your hand that says dumpster baby, there really is only so many ways you can turn that into a joke. And 
it's going to be a dark joke. But that is Game of Ham. I am always bored, never boring. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you think this is something that you might be interested in, do check out the link in the video description to find out much more about this game from the publisher's website. I hope you have liked the video. Please consider pressing the like button if you have. Please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.